Why would a person have so few friends? The deeper meaning behind isolation and trust in Zen philosophy, is it possible that a lack of friends reveals something deep within a person's soul? Could the absence of companionship be more than mere chance and hint at a truth that others sense but cannot fully articulate? These questions have been asked for ages by those who observe that certain individuals, though they may seem polite or agreeable, remain isolated, with no close bonds or friendships. Zen philosophy, rooted in understanding human nature and the subtle vibrations between people, often sheds light on this enigma. Zen teachings encourage us to look beyond surface appearances and consider why people hold each other at arm's length. A Zen master once said, people are mirrors. What they do reflects what they feel. This concept is foundational, for it tells us that actions, both of approach and withdrawal, reveal the truth hidden behind the mask. Those who are left alone by many may carry within themselves attributes that repel trust or intimacy, either unknowingly or as a result of choices they've made. In the spirit of this understanding, let us journey through a story that illustrates the complex reasons why some remain friendless and untrusted, even if they seem outwardly kind or gentle. The man with a lone path, in a small, serene town surrounded by misty mountains. There was a man who walked alone. To those who saw him from afar. He appeared calm, dressed modestly, and often greeted others with a polite nod. But over time, people noticed that he had no friends. He attended gatherings, visited markets, and walked the town paths like everyone else, yet no one grew close to him. He remained a mystery, curious about this, a young traveler who recently arrived in the town asked an elder, why is it that this man has no friends? He seems kind enough. Is it his appearance, his words, or something hidden within? The elder, wise and observant, replied, there are reasons beyond what meets the eye. The path of friendship requires trust, an invisible thread binding people. When that thread is thin or worn, bonds cannot form. For some, that thread never truly exists. The young traveler became intrigued and decided to discover the reasons behind the man's isolation. Over many days, he observed the man closely, noting his interactions, his reactions, and the energy he carried with him. Gradually, he began to see the reasons why others avoided deep connection with him. A glimpse of pride, an aura that alienates, one day, the traveler noticed the man sharing stories with a group of townspeople. The man's words flowed eloquently, but his tone carried an undercurrent of pride. He spoke not to engage or listen, but to impress. He did not seek mutual understanding but to assert himself as wiser, more insightful, and knowledgeable. As the man's stories continued, a few townspeople slowly edged away, leaving a polite distance between themselves and the storyteller. They had no desire to remain in the presence of someone who sought admiration rather than companionship. The man, however, seemed unaware. His pride made him oblivious to the small signs of withdrawal around him. As he assumed that his knowledge would draw them closer, in Zen, pride is a wall that separates hearts, the traveler thought, recalling an old teaching. He realized that the man's pride, masked as confidence, eroded the potential for trust. Those who seek admiration over mutual respect seldom receive true companionship. People sense this and withdrew, preferring not to build ties with one who saw himself above others, fear of vulnerability, guarded walls. In another instance, the traveler observed the man listening to someone who shared a personal story. As the person spoke, expressing their troubles and seeking solace, the man grew tense, 
his eyes scanning the room as if searching for an escape. He responded with polite words but never truly engaged, brushing off the topic or offering cold, calculated advice without empathy. The traveler understood another piece of the puzzle, the man's fear of vulnerability. Friendship is woven from shared openness and vulnerability, a willingness to reveal oneself, flaws and all. Yet, this man had no desire to reveal himself in such a manner, nor to engage in the vulnerability of others. He kept his emotions sealed, guarded tightly as if to avoid any perceived weakness. In Zen, vulnerability is not weakness, but courage, the traveler reflected. Without vulnerability, there is no true connection, for it is in these moments of openness that trust is built. People sensed the man's unwillingness to connect on a deeper level, and thus they kept their distance, unwilling to invest in a one-sided relationship, judgment as armor, a critical heart, as time went on, the traveler noticed another tendency in the man. He often criticized others, pointing out flaws, shortcomings, or errors in their actions and choices. Whether at a market stall, a gathering, or even during casual greetings, the man seemed compelled to evaluate and judge those around him, either openly or with subtle remarks. Criticism is a shield, an armor that reflects insecurity, the traveler remembered from his studies in Zen. Those who fear rejection often judge others harshly to protect themselves. But judgment, like a barbed fence, keeps others out. Friendships cannot grow in a space where people feel the sting of constant criticism. They shy away, feeling unworthy or uncomfortable, sensing they are always being measured, the traveler recognized that the man's judgmental nature pushed others away. People gravitated toward those who offered acceptance, not scrutiny. They longed for connection without the fear of judgment, and so they avoided the man, leaving him to walk alone, the insatiable desire for control, one morning, the traveler observed the man interacting with a craftsman in the market. The man watched intently as the craftsman worked, offering constant advice on how he should shape his wares, adjust his tools, or change his methods. Though the craftsman attempted to ignore the intrusions, the man continued, as though his need to control the outcome of another's work was irresistible, control is the opposite of trust, the traveler recalled. Zen teaches that to build trust, one must let go of the need to control others, accepting them as they are. But this man's insatiable desire for control strained relationships before they even began. Friendships thrive in freedom, where each person respects the boundaries of the other. In his need for control, the man unknowingly restricted others' sense of freedom, causing them to pull away, people sensed his controlling tendencies. His inability to simply be in harmony with others. They felt suffocated, and thus they created distance, reluctant to form a bond that felt more like a chain, the absence of gratitude, in his continued observations, the traveler noticed one last, crucial detail, the man rarely expressed gratitude. When receiving help, he would accept it silently, never acknowledging the effort of others or expressing appreciation. His demeanor suggested an air of entitlement, as if kindness and assistance were his due rather than gifts freely given, gratitude is the cornerstone of friendships, a form of mutual recognition that binds people with appreciation and humility. In Zen, gratitude reflects harmony with the universe, a willingness to honor what is given and acknowledge the value others bring. The absence of gratitude, however, leaves an emptiness, a hollowness that people instinctively avoid, the traveler understood that without gratitude, trust could not blossom. Others sensed this, perceiving the man as indifferent to their efforts or kindness, and thus chose not to invest further. 
Why extend oneself for someone who does not recognize the beauty of giving? After weeks of careful observation, the traveler felt he had gathered enough insights to answer his question. He approached the wise elder once more and shared what he had learned, pride, guardedness, judgment, control, and the lack of gratitude. Each of these traits, subtle yet powerful, had woven an invisible barrier around the man. Preventing others from connecting with him on a deeper level, the elder nodded, reflecting on the traveler's insights. You have learned well. These qualities may seem minor on their own, but together they create a loneliness deeper than isolation. People may sense these traits without fully understanding them, but their hearts know what their minds do not. They feel the absence of trust, and thus they keep their distance. The traveler bowed, understanding that this knowledge was a teaching, not only about others but about himself. He realized that to cultivate friendships, he must nurture within himself the qualities he sought in others, humility, vulnerability, acceptance, freedom, and gratitude. And as he left the town, he carried with him the lesson that isolation is seldom a mere accident, it often reflects an inner world that others instinctively choose to avoid, reflection, the path to true connection, the story of the man is a mirror for all who seek connection yet find themselves isolated. It is a reminder that true friendship, like all things, requires careful cultivation, the openness of spirit, and the wisdom to let others in. When trust is absent within, it is felt outwardly, and no mask or polite demeanor can hide it. To walk the path of friendship is to walk the path of trust, a journey where the heart must be willing to open, free of pride, judgment, and fear. In Zen, friendship is not about companionship alone but about harmony. Only by fostering this inner harmony can one create an outer bond that reflects it. Thus, the lesson of the lone man serves as a guide for all who walk the path of connection, reminding us that the most meaningful bonds are built on trust, vulnerability, and a grateful heart. Thanks for watching. Hope enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Just click the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. Also, feel free to leave a comment and let me know what you'd like to see next. See you in the next video.